It's Discover Tech. We're back. On the last episode, we touched on coronavirus in the workplace. And uh, just take a little different segue. I, I've been thinking about coronavirus a lot and the ways people have been trying to maneuver around it, trying to do, not, not necessarily in the workforce, but trying to like hang out and stay connected with people. I've been trying to not think about it. It's just too much. <laughs> it, no, it really is. I want life to go back to normal, but it's still our reality. It is. For now, it is. But yeah, so I, I kind of did my research because, you know, I didn't want to be boring. I didn't want to be cooped up in the house. I want to stay connected with my family and friends. So I looked up a bunch of things on what people are doing to stay connected and to still have fun. And I saw people were doing um, virtual hangouts. They're having virtual movie nights, virtual parties. And to be honest, it's a little bit lame. I think virtual video party, you know, it, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun in theory, but you just can't beat that human element that yeah, face to face, person to person. I like the, the dark of the theater, the experience, the comfortable chairs, because I often fall asleep in movies. So I like to pay to take a nap because sometimes that's the only way I can get a nap in is go pay $10 I, for I it know. with sugar in my well, system. Especially if you get those recliner chairs. Oh, yeah. They're so comfy. Oh, it's so nice. How, yeah. We I, had a theater with those new chairs in. Yeah, I nap every time without fail. But. So, but yeah, so we were talking about earlier, we've been having discussions about entertainment, and uh, that's blossomed into other topics like virtual reality and, and all those technologies which make uh, entertainment more interactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was thinking that, because it's just, it's just not the same. You know, it, it sounds fun that you can still bridge the gap, but... I think we need to look to bridge the gap in better ways. I don't know if life's sure. ever going to go fully back to normal, but if there's a way we can bridge the gap, and I feel like we might be able to do that with virtual reality. Well, virtual reality has been around for a long time. And for, a, for many years, and especially in movies, I noticed there was always a theme about future tech and how the entire world would be plugged into The Wired. I watched this anime, which was, that was literally what the internet was called, was The Wired. So there's this little girl and this entity that was in the wired was trying to get her to uh, become part of the wired. And so like by ending her life, it was this anime. So it was, you know, hmm. Japanese. So it was this really obscure topic. But, but basically the premise of that show was that all human consciousness would just come together electronically and we'd leave our physical bodies. It was weird. It was a good one. <sighs> That sounds a little scary if you ask me. So something I was thinking about, what if rather than having a virtual party where you're like together over the computer, what if you could, what if we got to the point that we could actually be with each other in this virtual world? I was thinking about that. I thought I've seen a lot of movies where like uh, the Marvel's Avenger, where Robert Redford's character, he would have these world leaders in him. They'd sit down. Um, other movies like the Resident Evil series where they're always in these cool, like they look like they're really there in the room. And so I thought, man, that would be really fun to have that kind of technology. So I was thinking on at the beginning of this this episode, we can kind of talk about what we've already been doing to develop up to this point. Like it's, it's cool to think about, but yeah. I've just been thinking about like what we've been doing up to this point to get us excited to think it's really ramping up for the future. So, Well, my neighbor, he had this whole setup where he'd bring these scanners, these like cameras, put them in the four corners of your room. And put his PC there. Then you put on the gear, the apparatus on your head and all that. And that was the first time I ever experienced VR. And that was like three years ago. And now we own a PlayStation VR. And I've even bought a couple of games recently. Uh, Super Hot and Arizona Sunshine, which are a zombie game and a uh, like a defense game where you fight these like dudes that are made out of glass. Kind of, it's weird. Um, but even I've gotten into it. So it's it's quite fun. I think. See, actually, for the longest time, I almost refused to use any sort of VR because I've always been kind of scared of it. I don't want, I feel like people are already addicted to video games, their phones, TV, like just being in different fantasy lands. So like I, I saw all the videos of people playing those because I think they're playing zombie games where they'd get, they have the headset on with the, with the phone yeah, and then they would get scared. And I just refused to do it until I went to David, Bu Dave and Buster's and I went on this like VR Jurassic Park ride. And, oh, wow. and it was awesome. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can buy into this. So you're like, you're like, this is immersive. 
Like, I like my son will play this. He likes Five Nights at Freddy's, which is his silly game. Whole bunch of games, but he got the VR version. So whenever I'd come upstairs, he'd be playing, and I just knew I could scare the crap out of him. That's so I'd funny. come up, and <laughs> he's playing this horror game for kids, and I'd be like, "Rock!" And then I'd slap his shoulder. He'd be like, "Ah, ah, don't you do that!" So <laughs> reality would come crashing into his VR experience, but. It was every time, and I'd rec- I'd shoot a video of it. That's it funny, great. like two worlds colliding. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. For me, the possibilities really are endless, but it was until yeah. you showed me this video of this video game called Half-Life Alex that until you see the video, you don't realize how incredible it is. You can literally manipulate anything in the game, which I think is incredible. I know. I was. I think we were like a couple of school kids. Like I was like, hey, you got to see this video, man. Look at this video game. And I'm in my 40s now. I'm like showing my coworker, hey, check out this video game. But in Half-Life, Half-Life Alex, one of the most, and this is the geeky thing, but you can grab a dry erase marker and, and you can write on a window with it. You know, little minutia like that, opening cans of food and different things. And so um, we'll, we'll put up some clips of that on the video version of this. But it's just fascinating the uh, level of immersion. And I think You're even right. you were, like, impressed by that. Oh, definitely. Because I'm in any game, you have some level of restriction. So to be able yeah. to literally draw whatever you want. Because I feel like most video games kind of push you, which I'm sure this one does as well. But most every video game pushes you to react to certain situations in the way they want the storyline to go. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool to see that you can draw literally anything that you want. Well, in the depth perception of these this equipment, it's like I can't imagine the amount of, of computing that a, a VR system has to do to just to make me write on a, on a window with a dry erase marker. It's, it's really, really weird the things that stand out. Like when my neighbor brought his thing that would scan the room, it was just like, whoa. It's, it's literally computing reality feeding that into a virtual experience. But I'm still in, I'm in both realities. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's almost, compre- it's almost hard to comprehend. Well, did you see like um, the Pokemon Go people that were out? I, I, was, just, was, I was about to talk, yeah, I was about to talk about that. That was incredible because it was like the most you've ever seen people outside. Because I remember I was walking around SUU's campus mm-hmm. and you know, it's, it's well around summertime and it's summertime, you don't expect anyone to be on campus. It's just packed with kids. People looking for Pokemon, <laughs> which I mean, it was it was awesome though. Like to see like a Pokemon on the like, you can move your head away from the phone. You can see that lawn, and then you move your phone in front of you, and there's a Pokemon sitting there. I fooled which I thought around was cool. with it. I fooled it. Well, you got to catch them all, right? But yeah. you don't want to catch a car while you're crossing the street. <laughs> I did. You did see stories like that where this is now. This isn't virtual. This is augmented reality right. where they were combining the real world into the gameplay. Right. Which is a whole nother level. It's, not, it's another ball game, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. Although I will say, I was extremely disappointed that they never added a battle feature where you could like pass, you could pass another trainer and battle your Pokemon. I think well, that would have been awesome. Well, and I think there's some big games coming up along that line, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm, and I was, I was <laughs> another day. I came. Remember Microsoft Flight Simulator? I do remember that. What do you think about that? I think it's really cool. I think, well, should we explain it a little bit more before I give my thoughts? Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty much, it's, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a flight simulator where you can, I mean, which will be, I think it'll be, it'll be good for people who are actually trying to learn how to fly a plane and just like a casual user as well. Because for me, I, I saw this thing and what I thought was really cool is you could see, because it's so realistic, like you can see some of the cities you've always wanted to see for, sure. I assume, a lot cheaper than you would normally. Well, yeah, and you can fly like Microsoft literally is is streaming all of this data. So you fly every kind of airplane. That, I mean, there's everything, and you can go anywhere on the globe. And it's using Microsoft's GPS and mapping data to feed the real world into your game, and also real world, real time weather conditions. So my question for Skyler was. What if you were flying to a country and you were playing the game through the airplane's Wi-Fi and you could like fly 10 minutes ahead where you were actually flying in real life and having real-time data so you could know like what's the – or an hour ahead and see what the weather was in, in the real world by flying your virtual plane on a real plane? <laughs> what? Pr- predict- did I just go d- three levels deep? Uh, I, I think you did, yeah. Pr- predict the turbulence. Like guys, be <laughs> – Guys, you better get ready for this. There's, There's a big old a, storm. A big wind gust here in a second. We we need to be careful. My my dad kind of did that to me because I thought I could 
I thought he could predict the future because we were watching a repeat of a Floyd Mayweather fight, and he said, "Oh, I guarantee, I get, I bet you anything that he knocks him out in the eleventh round." And I was, and then it happened. I'm like, "How did you know that?" So I feel like it'd be a similar thing. Well, if you have access to the World Wide Web and all the data that's real time around the globe, you could do a lot of things. Yeah, I, a lot of things have ever since coronavirus. A lot of things have been changing. So like events, I would say one thing that was mind blowing is. <laughs> In Fortnite, actually, they had record-breaking numbers for uh, a, it was a live, quote-unquote, con- uh, Travis Scott concert, which had 12.4 million streamers, I think, streaming in. Yeah. Well, Fortnite, if you don't know, and, and most of you will, but Fortnite's a like a third-person shooter. It's like over the shoulder, and so you're in this game world, but these real-world DJs and musicians are performing, and so... My son told me about it, and then I was up by at the PS4, and it was going. He had Fortnite on that night, and he had to go downstairs for some reason. So I jumped on, I figured out the controls, and I ran across the map. And there, there were these giant like girls, like dancer girls, and there was this DJ table. And I'm like, so this is it? This is the worldwide? And and you said what? Twelve million? Twelve million? Oh man! Twelve million. And, and it was just kind of like. This is a shooting game, so they're not shooting in it. They're at a party, and I'm just like, this is like, it's I guess strange. it's a way to sell some music, maybe. But yeah. What's the point? I mean, that is a lot of exposure. If you had Fortnite, you know, Fortnite marketing for you, saying Travis Scott's going to be on at this time. No, he's there. Travis Scott. He's a rapper. He's a rapper. Okay, a rapper. I saw DJ Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Is it? Yeah, well, who had the original record, and then it got beat by Travis Scott. Oh my gosh! But 12 million, like a news agencies and. Uh, Broadcast networks, like, they don't get 12 million. Not no. even for, like, their show finales. 12 million people are, are and they're, granted, most of them are teenage boys, but. Still. Wow. I mean, that still sells. It's, but, it's amazing. Well, well, it just makes me wonder, like, how the numbers are going to be if, if artists continue to try to do it. Because I feel like it's big now just because it's not as common. But still, even if you got 5 million, that's still a lot of people. Oh, man. A- any broadcast news station would want that. Well, and, and speaking of immersion also, we looked at the Infinidec. Oh, yeah. Now, now there's the sitting up in your room aspect where you just have a headset on, but tell us a little bit about the Infinidec. That was another thing we were geeking out about. Yeah, the Infinidec is incredible because, I don't know, I, I've always thought about VR and I've always thought, like, playing Call of Duty as a kid, I'm like, oh, this would be so cool to do it, but, like, actually moving around and, like, shooting guys, but you don't you don't think about what it would take to get behind that, and so uh, the other day, Thomas showed me a video of the Infinidec, which is a 360 captures every movement treadmill yeah well it sounds like this is all we do um at work as well (laughs) tech good no we do just to prepare for these videos but the infinidec was a set of two um it was a treadmill but it was a square treadmill it was one track on top of another so one goes um west to east and the other goes north to south and what it does is it it calculates your position with the camera and there is a uh, frame and a bar a circular bar that goes around and then in the virtual reality you can see the bar it's a physical bar like a still bar so that you don't walk off the treadmill while you're doing it but it, it, it helps you compute where you are in the world and then it moves according to your own inertia it has to calculate for inertia how fast to speed up how slow but yeah, my my uh, there again. My son and I were watching that one night, geeking out. Yeah, about yeah. There's definitely a big learning curve. There's a lot they still need to do because I don't, I don't think any of us, most of us know that the sky's the limit, but we don't realize like how complex and like how much we need to do to get to that point. And so that's like one of those other things that I didn't really think about, like how I didn't think about how difficult it would be until I saw it to be able to calculate your every move because it's got to be ready for you to move any direction at any time, which is. Sounds impossible. Well, humans are kind of unpredictable, and we jerk around a lot, especially in a game environment. So for a machine to calcul- do so much calculation. But I did notice that that Infinidec was featured in the movie Ready Player One. That's, they actually took a prototype, that prototype from that company, and put him on one of those, in one of those scenes. Hmm. Ready Player One. That was a whole thing. I, I, I listened to the book, and I just remember... 
that was about um, I can't remember what they called that uh, world, but it was basically you'd go into the virtual reality, you'd go to school, and uh, mm-hmm. what do you think about going to school? You're you're just getting done with college. How would you like going to school in virtual reality? I did online, but virtual reality where you oh. can actually meet with people. Hmm. Would you like that? You could be home in your underwear and sitting in class. <laughs> well, I was just debating in my head if I'd prefer that over like a regular online class, which to be honest with you, I think I'd prefer the regular online class. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Yeah. But that, that's beyond the point. Um, I think I would like it because I think I would like to be able, because you don't have to, because it's a process to get ready for school. Oh man. But like, but when it comes to virtual reality school, like you said, you can just roll over and yeah, it could and be hop in. Time. Yeah. And you can look like whatever you want. <laughs> that's, yeah, well, good. that's true. They did in that movie. You picked your own avatar. So I remember he had a friend, and I think she was a black girl, but she was a black guy, this big hulking black guy in the virtual world, and in the real world, she was this little black girl. So it was interesting. And then uh, the girl he was dating, she would look different. Well, that's a question about relationships, too, and this might segue into our next – we'll talk about this in the next half, but – like dating and meeting people through games online. I know there have been marriages come out of like EverQuest, World of Warcraft, those massive MRPG, MMRPGs yeah. that have come out of that. So, I mean, that, that takes catfishing to another level. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that'd be it's so true. strange. I, so true. It would just change the entire experience because if someone looks like, yeah, so say if I was – six seven huge big muscles like what i what i say as that person might carry a different weight than how i say something in this body i was gonna say in my head i am but then literally (laughs) if i'm if i think of myself a certain way because we we portray externally what we think internally so like whatever character you'd pick online that's what you want to be and yeah. so you're you're exposing that so what would you want to look like in an online avatar Personally, I, I, I would say I, I would want to be pretty similar, like similar height, just maybe more. I think I would want to look fairly similar, just obviously just better biceps, maybe not as big of like eye bags. But other than that, I think I would want to look similar because I wouldn't want to catch anybody by surprise if I saw them in the real world. Yeah, because if you got an attachment to someone, uh, say you liked someone, then you're going to meet up for real yeah. in the real world. You don't want to walk in. You're like... Oh, you're a foot shorter than in, on your online profile. Yeah, and I'm just giving everyone else that respect as well. Because, I mean, I don't want to get caught by surprise, so I don't want to catch someone else by surprise. So maybe virtual reality has a weird way of making us more transparent than we are normally. Because we all wear masks. And literally with virtual reality, we are wearing masks. masks. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Any other games or any other insights? Like, uh, I was thinking about... Well, we can get into movies well, in that next in the next half, but well, I kind of want to talk about like the the possibilities of like live events because they're finishing up they're wrapping up the NBA season next month, but they're all just doing it in one facility without fans. Oh yeah. So it just makes me wonder if people are going to get virtual tickets where they put the headset on and like it feels like they're at the game, but they're not actually at the game. Hmm. It opens up some interesting possibilities. What if I could pay to sit on the 50-yard line on the front row or even be on the sidelines with the team. Yeah. Walking down amongst all of them. Yeah, but it just makes me think like Hearing what, them what swear. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me wonder like would they make that red, would they make that available for everybody for free? They just had to pay for the headset or would they actually be charging tickets for you to get courtside in virtual courtside at this game? Why couldn't they charge for that? I feel like that's what they would do to make it to make up for the loss. Well, think of your favorite, let's say NFL, like literally walk with the team members on the side. Of course, the team members might want to remember they're streaming their every action and word. But, but yeah, that's an interesting concept about virtual access to real-world people. Well, I also know that, you know, athletes and even – even musicians like at a concert like they like having people there so are they going to stream holograms of every single person that's attending this event Hmm. that would be i would i would pay for that depending well i i would too i think it'd be cool Hmm. i can think of several that i'd like to and get a private audience with so yeah as hologram and and augmented reality and virtual reality improves like these things all open up some interesting questions which 
I think we're going to del- delve more into interesting questions. We're going to talk about the philosophy and the psychology of virtual and augmented reality on our lives um, as connected to entertainment. Yeah. So I think that's a great point for us to pause and take a little break. But for now, we're going to take a little stop for some tech trivia. So we're going to give you three tech-related questions. So you're going to get your answers. You're going to email them to trivia at infowest.com, and you'll be automatically entered into our giveaway. And we have three prizes. We have the bronze, silver, and gold, the gold being the biggest prize. Yep, absolutely. And, and for every entry, there is a uh, nice little gift for you regardless. So everyone's a winner. So let's get to our questions. How many computer languages are in use? 5,000? 2,000, 20, or 50? Question number two. Which of these companies invented Ethernet networking? Cisco, Xerox, Packard Bell, or AT&T? All right, and question number three. Which telephone company introduced the first mobile telephone service in 1946? AT&T, Central Telephone and Electronics, Vivendi Universal, or Bell Telephone Company? So those are your three questions. Again, to enter our drawing, email us at trivia at infowest.com. Welcome back, everybody. Up to this point, we've been talking about entertainment, video games, virtual reality, all that good stuff. Now let's get a little bit deeper. I would say half the people are excited and half the people are scared about virtual reality. So I think we, we talked about everything that's exciting about it, all the cool things that are coming out, but I think we should talk about the potential effects of virtual reality well yeah people are scared because of movies i think specifically 2001 space odyssey you have that astronauts getting killed by an artificial intelligence um and terminators literally terminating the human race and so um ex machina was just a twisted one where a guy falls in love with a an android that has advanced ai and so she tricks him using her alluring uh, features, so to speak, and, and in intellect. And so people get afraid of technology becoming self-aware, the singularity, all that. What do you think about that? You get a little tense about technology? Oh, yeah, I get a little tense. I, I think it's natural for a human just to be scared about what they don't know. And I, I would have to agree. I feel like it's almost kind of like aliens. We're, we're, kinda, we're scared of aliens because we don't know what they're capable of, and we don't know what this technology is capable of. True. And I think what worries me the most about this whole thing, so I think it, it all starts back to radio. Radio. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm scared because I'm thinking of, I'm putting myself in the shoes of a father, a, a future father. And so, you know, back in the 1900s, you probably had parents saying, hey, you're listening to that radio too much. Or parents saying, you're watching the TV too much. Then you're playing video games too much. And then it got to, oh, you're on your phone too much. And now it's going to get to the point where I feel like we're progressing, but it kind of, in a way, feels like a digression a little bit. Because I was having a conversation with my friends, and I was saying, my dad complained about me playing video games too much. But now I almost feel like compared to people just sitting on their phones, it almost seems a lot more productive to play video games. So you can at least like watch what they're doing too. Yeah. You, you can see on the screen like what they're doing, but I could imagine, you know, coming home from work and seeing my kid just with their headset on, just hanging out on, on the couch. And you can't even, you probably can't even, you can scare them like you said, but you can't like have a conversation while they're playing. Yeah, you literally have to shock them back into actual reality. Yeah. And so, you know, I saw this movie a few years ago called Surrogates, and and by all means, in box office, the people I've talked to, they remember this movie, not because it was great, but because in this movie, the Bruce Willis was the main guy. You would get in a chamber, and you would hook up to this machine, and you would run an Android body, and this is exactly what you talked about in the first half. They looked like their surrogates or these robots. But the surrogates don't age, whereas they were aging, and you'd see the signs of their aging, so they would go to work as their surrogates. So in one scene, Bruce Willis says to his wife, hey, I want to go out. Let's get away this weekend. And she's like, great, I'll load up the surrogate or whatever. He's like, no, just us. 
And she was like horrified because her surrogate was this gorgeous, like everybody's gorgeous. And so he gets beat up in one scene is walking down the street in his actual form, not as a surrogate. And everyone, all these gorgeous surrogates are walking up down, looking at him like, cause he had cuts and he was all beat up. And they're looking at him like, why would you be out as a normal human body? Yeah. And that was a little weird. That is a little weird. And that's another thing that scares me actually, because what if people, so say you can make yourself look however you want, however athletic, strong, everything. You can have all the ideal attributes. What if you, what do people never want to be in the real world anymore? What if you're this big, strong, handsome guy in this virtual reality? So like that's who dominates, what, who dominates, who's like good at gaming or whatever the activity is. Yeah. Yeah. And so like what it, you're obviously you have that supreme confidence when you're the perfect person. I feel like that would diminish your confidence when you're in the real world, when you're not like that anymore. Well, you even said that and, and to, I didn't connect this point. You said you would want to look like yourself just maybe a little bit enhanced, yeah. you know, a little bit oh, yeah. more handsome, a little taller, a little thicker, you know, muscly, whatever. And that's exactly what they did in Ready Player One. But but you see elements of that, don't you? Like on, on dating sites, um, you see Instagram. it on uh, social media, influencers. I mean, people really do posture, but yeah. it's actually them. It's just with filters. Like I know, I know a lot of people will get rid of wrinkles with these filters, and it looks very natural. Yep. That's like what you were talking about, like showing up to meet someone in real life, and you got a little more wrinkles or maybe a little more chubby on the body than you oh, yeah. did online. Oh, <laughs> well, this, this is kind of getting off on a tangent, but like I, you just got to – you kind of have to – and this, so this is kind of a tip for people in virtual reality in the future, but <laughs> so I feel like you got to keep it to a level where you do look better, but it's not like that noticeable. Like, I feel like you can't go from 300, like 300 pounds in real life to, you know, 120 pounds on Instagram or in this virtual reality and then the expect fat, no fat one filter. Well, yeah. And then <laughs> expect no one to react when you meet them in real life. You got to make it to the point where it's like. They could have looked like that to where it's not, it's yeah. not like that noticeable. Well, well, and like with the wrinkles, maybe, maybe we are like, okay, I'll compromise. I won't get rid of them so that I'm a 50 year old who looks like a 30 year old online. That's dishonesty for yeah. sure. But, but maybe I just present the best version of myself because some days we look better than others. It's just true. Some days we have bad hair days. Well, and some people just really aren't photogenic. Uh, that's true. It's true. A lot of people say it, but <laughs> some people, some people really aren't photogenic. Well, well, and that doesn't matter anymore because we can fix that in exactly. post. Yeah, exactly. we can fix that yeah, in post. So. Well, that's the thing. Like the we mentioned, Ready Player One, and I remember uh, Spider Man: Far From Home, which was a pretty popular Marvel movie last year. But the whole. The whole plot was Mysterio was using drones and projection and weapons. They weaponized those drones to like fight Spider Man. And so Spider Man had to reach deep down and use a spider sense to figure out. And I'm thinking, that's not that far off. No, it's really not. I, well, I think that's where it's going to get tough because it's going to be, it's going to get to the point like, how do we know how to distinguish what's real and what's not? Because it's like, you can think like, oh, like all that fantasy stuff will just be in virtual reality. But what if they bring virtual reality into real life? And, and and what if you didn't know? Like, what does the government have the ability to do? I think I get on Google Earth and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But I'm thinking, oh, I'm sure that government and private organizations have amazingly down to the square foot or more detail. I remember Enemy of the State with Will Smith, that movie, where literally this satellite was tracking him as he's running down the street, and he kept zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, almost camera quality like on the street. And I'm just like, that freaked me out. Yeah. And it, so I'm, I'm it's, it's, it's definitely possible too. Uh, yeah. Well, another thing I think about too is you always have that argument on the news. Do violent video games create violence in real life? And I think, say, you play Grand Theft Auto in virtual reality, I think that adds a, another, a huge element. I don't know how many thousands of headshots most young people have done in their lives. Think about that. So many of the first person shooters like Call of Duty and, and all these others, you're literally headshots is what you want because it takes the enemy, the virtual enemy down. So literally most kids you know, including your own, have probably done thousands of headshots, which have gotten more and more realistic, 
more and more uh, capacity to render in in real time, you know, extreme violence. Yet violent crime has gone down since 1980. I think the numbers have been going down. So you could say it's a release valve. That's true. Because you have the movie like The Purge. Who's to say in this fictional movie they would have had to do it had they had virtual reality? Oh, man. Maybe virtual reality is a safety valve for people's baser. Maybe maybe that's – and that's why I've never been afraid of AI in that in virtual reality because I feel like it's a reflection of the humans who create it. I feel like there's a fail safe in it, whereas uh, – we will hold back. In fact, I think what happens is you get a brand new toy, right? And you just misuse it. It's a powerful toy. It's like a Pandora's box. And then you let it loose and it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like like we had that Columbine shooting, which was horrible. And yes, they had cited Doom, the video game, as part of the inspiration. But then you see violent crime decreasing substantially. And so it's like, maybe it's just this virtual reality technology augmented, all that. Maybe it's just we get used to it, and then just our own human virtue, we start to scale back the dishonesty, and the, we open up transparency, and maybe it improves the way we act. Well, what if they? What if it desensitizes people, though? Like, what if it starts feeling so real that you're pretty much used to harming other people? Well, it, it could be that we've done so many headshots and played so many violent video games that we don't need that in the real world. I've never run across violence. Maybe you have. One time I was in Old Navy. A kid came in with a lead pipe and held up the cashier while I'm sitting there. Really? Yeah, that was that was pretty oh, freaky because it's like, oh, this is one of those real life situations that you think you'll be a hero in. Mainly, I just kind of froze like, oh, what do I do? Should I go? But, but I don't really want to lose life or limb for Old Navy. Well, I, I, I guess it, you have the counter argument. What if it makes us more calm in crazy situations like that? could yeah so i mean there's there's always the two sides of the coin but it could make the fringe more violent because now they're living that out that's they, true they're not getting the actual real life experience of doing something terrible so maybe it goads them on to i don't know man I, who knows i tend to be on the other side yeah yeah so i was i was thinking of a, a little segue so there's the movie her is it her or she her her the movie her where the guy falls in love with a computer. Joaquin Phoenix. Which, yeah. that's another thing. I Maybe I'm just a scared person, because this is bringing up a lot of fears I have with virtual reality. But I always, I always just go ahead and think, and I'm really good at putting myself in the shoes of someone else or, like, my future self. And I just imagine, like, if I was married, if I was married and we're, like, we're having problems, what if one day my wife just says she fell in love with some virtual character in a video game? Hmm. Well, that would never happen to you, Skylar. That's true. But that could happen. Well, in the movie, he falls. He basically falls in love with the this AI who has the voice of Scarlett Johansson, and this AI is super advanced. It's in the near future, and and he says in one scene, I, I remember he's like something to, I wish I could hold you, but he realizes technology cannot feel that human gap, that void. His wife had left him, or they had separated, and so. You need the human touch, and, and that's why I think that all of this fear over robots and, and virtual reality and how it will replace people, I just think at the end of the day that the core compu- – that humanity that we all have, it just it, – it's the fail switch – or the safety switch for all of us. It's the fail safe. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe virtual reality bridges that gap, and we can get suits where we can actually feel, and it just feels so real. But one thing that I keep thinking about is – because they talk about this perfect person who would care about everything you have to say and would do everything sure. you want them to do. Oh, and in her, she did, the AI. Yeah. But I just can't help to think that this this virtual reality person would probably get friend-zoned, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> when you had a real-life, yeah, <laughs> a li- real-life companion, yeah. Well, because what, what's the fun in that if they just do literally everything you want and there's no pushback? Hmm. Well, and also, like... I just think that, and this can get into more metaphysics or spiritual, I think there's this spiritual element that a machine is going to mimic and even learn, but it's never going to be a human, and I think that's going to be a key component. That di- I just don't fear the future and, and virtual reality and all that. I just don't, for well, some reason. I guess at the end of the day, you can't, you shouldn't be afraid of anything that's that hasn't happened yet. Or is that there's just nothing conceptual? You can do about it. 
Yeah. It's a, it's an idea. It could happen. I, I mean, I, I say that I'm scared, but I'm also very intrigued by the possibilities. I think I, I'm extreme. It's interesting. That summarizes how I feel. I'm, yeah, I'm intrigued by it all too, but uh, I don't fear. I just, I just feel like to this point, humans are still humans and all, all I think tech will do is just make us transcendental. Yeah, I agree. I just thought of a really, uh, really dark element of possibilities in virtual reality. So, so we've seen recently that there have been deep fakes. Oh yeah. A, a lot of deep fakes where they try to get people like put a celebrity's face on someone else. So I was just thinking, what if you took that a step farther in virtual reality? Say there was someone else that had their eyes like on your wife, for example. What if they used a they used a person in virtual reality that looks exactly like you and just said like a bunch of bad things or constant like being like a mean person, being a jerk. And yeah. so once they get back into the real world, then that's what they think. That all they can think about is you saying that. It's almost kind of like a bad dream. If you had a bad dream about someone, then you're kind of pissed about them about that in the morning. Well, yeah, that that uh, movie Total Recall out of the I think the 90s with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, like he has these dreams or these memories that he doesn't know what's real, and his wife wasn't really his wife, but he had all these memories implanted that she was his wife. And then he was in this other movie called Running Man where they literally in one scene of the TV show where these guys would compete in this to the death show where you'd have these characters like professional wrestlers would kill the contestants. And so uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is literally re- leading the resistance and he's watching himself be killed on national TV. But they had pasted with technology a different face over this other person who matched his physique. And so the world thought he had been killed, if I remember all that correctly. And so... So yeah, there's that. That's been in movies for for decades. Well, now. well, imagine watching people being excited about your death. They think that you died, and everyone's excited about it. What would be really what? Want to know what would be really interesting? What's that? If you put on the face of someone else to see like how much differently they would treat you. Oh, I see. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Well, you definitely get swiped more if it was a yeah, social yeah. media <laughs> yeah. profile. Oh man! Well, I just I don't know. I I think what ha- I think it, there's a curve, there's an arc where you get this fever pitch of just destructiveness with technology, and I do feel like it decreases. And then at the same time, there's also that human spark, that divinity I feel in each human. I don't think Terminator will happen, or how to how how in two thousand one where this AI kills these astronauts. I. I legitimately feel like humans are going to be okay. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that's a, a reason a lot of people are scared because we see all these movies where things self-destruct and whatever. But, you know, movies have to have – they have to make money. They have to have a hook. So, Well, they're, they are existential questions. Like we think about who are we really? What's our identity? And then we see all of this chaos and the bad things in the world and, and we just look at the, the wickedness of – potential of humans what they can do to each other and then we apply that to tech themes because like you said it's the unknown like to wrap it all up from the beginning it's the unknown well have you ever sat at the beach and just looked out in the ocean just to see that you can't see anything at the end never ends i think that's terrifying the unknown i'm afraid of the ocean well maybe it does end Maybe it's a waterfall at the end. Uh, Honestly, these are great questions, and I think we grapple with them, and each year new technology comes out. And that's why the Discover Tech podcast exists, because we want to bring you these questions and also new technology that maybe you haven't seen or is fascinating to learn about. Well, I think that's been a good episode of Discover Tech. We appreciate you all for listening. And if you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and a nice review. And make sure to subscribe so you catch every episode of Discover Tech. Till next time, the future is here.